It's a gospel on the radio talk show. A show about dreams and visions and a church that is indeed triumphant, alive, and well. For the church, triumphant is alive and well. Oh, Tallahassee, this is the Gospel on the Radio Talk Show. I'm Pastor Jack King. I am your host, and uh, well, it's always excited to have you along. We talk about dreams and visions and a church triumphant, alive and well. We talk about the church and God's glorious kingdom. Been doing this for a while. This is show number 1052 today. And uh, that reminds me to invite you that if you're involved in Christian ministry, you need to be on the show with me. Give me a call, area code 850-567-1703, and we'll pre-record the show. And... uh, We'll have a lot of fun. And a gentleman that's been here with me many times now, and we've always have a good time when he comes, it's Brother Henry Miller. He is, uh, man, he is a man on the go. <laughs> we just been sitting here talking about some of the stuff that he does. He's a pastor. Pastor. Author. Author. Uh, singer, musician, uh, missionary. Missionary. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, a little bit of everything. You, you got it going, my brother. Yeah, well, I told somebody here, well, like, I'd show a whole lot rather burn out for Jesus than rust out for the devil. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think you're going to do either one of those. <laughs> if you were going to do that, you'd have done that a long yeah. time ago. <laughs> I was talking to somebody not too long ago. They talked about somebody who had, who had, had really had burnt out. Mm-hmm. And I said to myself, uh, you know, if, if, if anybody that has a right to burn out, it should have been me. <laughs> because I know. Amen. because I know. We, you know, I've, I've been into so many different things. Mm-hmm. But the thing is that, I enjoy ministry. I do. Now, now it it okay. has its stresses and strains. It does. Yeah. yeah. Now come just look closer, Brother Henry. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it has it. It has its. Yeah. It has its moments. It does. It does. <laughs> I was telling Brother Brother Miller we just closed our live nativity out here just a few days ago, and I'm telling you what it about worked me uh, into the ground. Uh-huh. But we had people come, and, right. and you see the effect, and you watch the children, and there, there's the stories being told to them by their parents. Right. It, it, this is why we do it in it. Hey, I just left the car- a caroling where at our church in Woodville. We took a load on a big trailer and went all over Woodville car- caroling. And it's a lot of work to load up about 50 people. Yeah, now, now that's an interesting way to do it. You had a trailer. Had a big trailer. Behind, a, behind what, a, a van or something like that? Well, a friend of mine, he uh, lives in Woodville, and he loaned me his dually truck. It's a big old trailer. So okay. we, we uh, loaded one. I don't remember. We had that thing packed full of young'uns and adults, and they was all riding up down in Woodville about an hour ago singing right. Christmas carols. So you're singing as you go in the trailer. Yeah. Are you going They're up in the ha- trailer? I'm in, I was just driving the truck. But, but are, are they getting out and going up to houses? No. No, we pulled over in front of the house. In fact, we had a couple said, would you stop in front of my house and sing okay. for us? And so we pulled over side the road, and they all stood that's on That's an street. interesting way to do it. I, I, that's that's pretty cool. I, and then we went down Bob Miller Road and all back through the woods and yeah. then come out yeah. on Elgin. So yeah. it was a great time. They had yeah. children. Love. They didn't send a lot of them said, thank you for this. I, so I, I had a lady. She'd never done it. Huh. She, she was, I think she's about my age. She said, I've never been caroling in my life, but this was a blast. I'm freezing. But <laughs> <laughs> No, I'd never heard about the, the, the trailer concept. We've done it around the neighborhood here right and uh, what i do is i'll i'll go before we go to carolyn i'll go pass out these little slips of paper mm-hmm. and i tell people if you want us to carol at your house put this on your screen or front door right leave your porch light on right. and it worked out real well yeah. because that way we people were there that they, they received us well right as a result of it right now we've also done the cold turkey thing too right and sometimes people will receive you yeah and sometimes yeah. they won't <laughs> yeah. well i said this was a good one we had a lot of people you know good. that uh, was they, they, they wanted us to we stopped and we sang and then you know a lot of people was you know waving that's when we went by because i had one lady sent me a thing a while ago and she said we don't see this no more where people just because I told you actually the old days they went out on a horse and buggy uh-huh. and they rode around singing Christmas carols and but it turned out good yeah. we had a lot of now, you, you did this in Woodville for for those who don't know who where Woodville is it's, it's south of Tallahassee mm-hmm. it's a little small little community small there community. So how would that work in Tallahassee do you think? I don't know <laughs> might not work so good yeah, it, 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 if you had a neighborhood it, yeah, you just go right. to the neighborhood yeah. because yeah. we had to pick my route because the trailer was so long and the truck was so big that I was pulling 
pulling it with us. Right. We can't can't be, get bottled up somewhere, so we yeah. had to uh, made us a rat where I could. And you also want to make sure you were in an area that was safe right. for us. Yeah, you absolutely. haven't been out on the road with the no, trailer. They, that they won't thing. be going to main road. I said, no, we'll get a main road. We'll get a main road. Right. Or right. So. But uh, the thing is, you, you made the effort. People were blessed. Yeah. By had it. a great time. <laughs> <laughs> now, you pastored. Tell us the name of your church. Yeah. Victory Through Truth Ministries. And it's right in uh, right, right in Woodville on the old Woodville Highway. Right. And you've been pastor there how long? Uh, whoa, let's see. This coming February is going to be 39 years. 39 years. 30, wow. I've been there 30, February, the last Sunday in February is 39. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's, that's that's a good long time. We've Pastor been, Sneeds three years before that, so I've been in it, see, 39, 41 years. Wow, wow. The, the thing is, is that uh, when you go someplace and you feel the call of God, you, you say, well, I'll leave when I hear the call of God again. Right. And and that's the way I've been here. I, well, we've been here 43 here at yeah. the Hope of Bible Church, uh, Freedom Road, do we call it, right. over the other location. And I've said, well, when God speaks to me, like he did, yeah. I mean, I heard from God when he told us to come here. Right. And uh, I said, when I hear the voice, I'm gone. <laughs> right. I had a superintendent that was over the, I was, it, at that time was International Pentecostal Wholeness. And he lived here in Tallahassee. He was over the whole thing. His name was Orrin Simpson. I remember him. Yeah. yeah he was a great guy. I love brother. He was a great man of God. And anyway, uh, he when I went to Sneeds, uh, Woodville, I didn't really want to go there. But anyway, that's where the Lord wanted me to go. I had another church that wanted me, and I wanted to go there. But the Lord redirected me the way right. he wanted me to go. Sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My plans were go here. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Brother Simpson, when we got talking – yeah, you know, after I was accepted in the church, he said, "Well, I've always tried to place a pastor with the personality of the church, and I don't think a pastor can do a work in a year or two. It takes him a long time sure. to establish his identity in the community, right. to establish the people where they'll trust him, and he's coming and leaving because you know a lot of pastors do that come and go. But the bottom line was, I didn't realize when he said that I was going to be there thirty nine. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about it is that you, after a while, you earn the right to speak into people's lives. Right. Because you, you've been there. You've been solid. Right. They know they can rely on you. Right. And that's very important. And so, you know, it's, it, it's, it's kind of cool when you walk into the grocery store. You know, everybody knows you there. You're not going to, there's, there's Preacher Miller. Hey, brother. How you sure. doing? And some of them come and say, hey, would you pray for me? Yeah. And, and it, they just know you. Know, right. It's kind of comes. And, but it's also an advantage of being in a, in a small community. Right. Because you, you become known. Right. To that. You know, you become yeah. part of their family. Yeah, see, I tell people I'm I'm the invisible man. Right. Uh, people don't know who I am. Yeah. Now, people know my voice. Right. But they don't know who I am. I can I can go around Tallahassee anywhere just about and just be totally in, invisible. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, ain't many places in Woodville I can't walk into. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're in a small community, yeah, a small and such community. as that. And I've always loved it. You know, yeah. the people there just they're just my. I was raised in Bristol, Florida, so kind of Bristol. So, yep. No, Bristol's yeah. on this side. Bristol's on the between here in Panama City. It's about half we had this side of hospital. Yeah, but isn't that uh, on? Is, isn't it on the Apalachicola River? Yeah, right on the Apalachicola yeah. River. Right. And you cross the river, and you're the other time. In zone. Town, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right. I used to leave at work at seven and get to work at seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always thought that was funny. I mean, you got these two towns are right near each other, but right. they're in totally different time zones. Yep. Cross the river, and I understand there's a big rivalry in the sports world. Oh yes, yes. I've been playing <laughs> high school football. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, I've. I've heard about that over right. there. Yeah. And of course, all that's west of Tallahassee for all of those of you who live. Uh, out, you, we're streaming here, so yeah. people can be listening anywhere. They go, right. where are these places at? Right. Now? Okay. Now, Brother Henry, what's the latest uh, thing that you have got yourself into? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got myself into a bunch of stuff yeah. lately. We have, uh, I think since I was with you, we've opened the uh, Hosford Mission. It's in Hosford, Florida. And, uh, and uh, we, west, west. West. In fact, it's between Bristol and Tallahassee. It's go. on Highway 20, and it's a little community there the Lord led us to. And we've been ministering every Tuesday from 10 to 1 to people's uh, clothes, uh, food, uh, hygiene items, school supplies. Tomorrow, we, uh, well, it'll be this there will be Sunday. So, But uh, we're doing a big Christmas giveaway this week. and, uh, and then, But the biggest thing is we... Pray for people because a lot of people come through there and they, they, you see they're hurting. Right. You can see they're down. You see they're hard, going through hard times. And we're just, uh, sometimes they'll say, can you pray for me? Because we let them know we're serving the Lord here. And this is something about Jesus, Matthew 25, where I was hungry and you didn't feed me. Right. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. Prison you didn't visit me. And we let them know that we're doing this for Jesus. And right. this is him that made the way. This is him that, that we're doing this for. And we want them to get him to get all the glory. And, uh, 
So we opened that, and we've been so blessed with, I mean, I just can't count the people who come through every Tuesday. So you go to every week. Every week. Every week on Tuesday. Yeah, every week on Tuesday from 10 to 1 on now Highway you, 65 at Larry's Old Barber Shop. That's okay. what everybody knows, Larry's Old Barber Shop. But, but you're not doing it in the building. You're, you're, We're doing you're, it. You're bringing a trailer. Right. We're bringing a big trailer. We open up, set out a bunch of tables, and put up tents every Tuesday, and we put all the food and clothes out, hygiene items. Okay. But now, not only are you... Taking this stuff here, you're having to load this trailer through the week. Load it through the week, unload it over there, reload it when we're through. And now you're not doing all this by yourself. No, no, oh, no, thank no, the Lord. Lord mercy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, but where does the stuff come from? People donate it to me. I got people that'll call me and say, hey, you know, uh, so and so just passed away and we're cleaning out the house. Would you like the clothes? Uh, and, and and I've had them donate it. You know, some we got something the other day. We had still had the tags hanging on of a lady that had. And then some people call me, hey, my child's outgrown my loaner their clothes. And the only thing we ask is if they not holes and wore out because we try to give the Lord our best. Sure. And so we want the people to get the best. Okay. Now how how big is this trailer? It's pretty good size. I mean, it hauls a lot of clothes. I mean, is it generally full? Generally, yes. It's always plus my van. I got to yeah. remember so, so in, white van. in one week's time, every week, every week, you're collecting this stuff. Yep. And then uh, now, how do they get in touch with you to, to bring it? I mean. Well, well, they they can either go to my Henry Miller Ministries website, or a lot of them know me, or yeah. you know. But where do they bring it? I mean, the trailer isn't open all the time, so they no, got, no. They can bring it to Woodville Church. Okay. Or we got a build building there that's set up for that. Okay. Plus, we opened a Woodville Mission, and we got a building there that's okay. set up to receive. Okay. So, and, so, uh, so, in other words, there's there's somebody there, right? Somebody so, there. Yes. If you if you decide you want to want to take something down there, there'll be somebody there somebody to there receive to it. it. That's right. It so, so as you receive this stuff, somebody. It may go to the Woodville Mission. So Some of it Panacea, goes to Hartford. Yeah, I see. It go may go anywhere. Yeah. So every week you or load to the Appalachian Mountains where they. St- I got three missions there. It but could every go week you're, you're loading this trailer up mm-hmm. and you're putting food items in there, clothing items mm-hmm. in there, and then you are hooking your van up to it and yep. you're driving and we to load Hartford. the van with food. Okay. Oh, I said the van's got food. Yeah, the van's got food, and the trailer's got clothes. And, and uh, who all who all's going with you? Uh, usually, I got a couple of that goes to my church with me, and uh, one little girl. She's thirteen. She's just a jewel. She loves working for the Lord, so she'll go help me. But when I get there, I got uh, one, two, three, four that'll meet me with four ladies, and and a, um, a brother comes by and they help me unload, set everything up, and then they'll all help me break it back down and load it back up at, at one o'clock. So you just made me tired. <laughs> <laughs> And you're doing this every week. And this, every this is just one location. One location. Then we do Woodville every Thursday from 10 to 1. Now, Woodville, we got a building. Okay. So we just put the. You so know, the building's not open all the time. No, no. Thursday, it's 10 Thursday, to 1. 10 to 1. And, and, and when, we go to Panacea from 2 to 6. Well, well, but when it's open, yeah. there's clothing items, clothing items and, and food. Clothing, food, hygiene, school supplies, the most anything you'd need. Wow. Yeah. Fact, it's all free. All free. Don't cost nobody a dime. It's all wow. provided. In fact, I was you know, sharing with you before we went on the show, I had a lady the day come up to me in one of the giveaways. She said if it hadn't, wasn't for us, that she would, she's an elderly lady. She said if it wasn't for you coming and doing this, I wouldn't be able to eat two weeks out of the month because wow. I don't have enough money or stamps to get me through. And I said, well, this is why we're here. See, I think that there's a lot of people who don't know that this is going on in our community. I'm not talking about what you're doing. I'm talking about the, 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 the need. The needs. The need. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I can't say that I'm totally aware of it. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I have noticed something in, in Tallahassee in the last uh, few months that all of a sudden I'm seeing the homeless people up around the uh, Capitol Circle area, Park right. Avenue, uh, that I have not ever seen before. Right. And I don't know. There's Now, I, I realize that the... Uh, what they call the Carney Center, which is right. uh, homeless here in Tallahassee, right. has been closed down. I don't, is it open now? Do you, I don't do you, know. The last I yeah. had it, because they were sapping me with some food at times when I was running short. But now they they hadn't been able to hit me because of you know being right crazy. right uh, and of course now the people who are coming to you for assistance these people have homes and jobs but they still is, is they're running short some of them do okay like in Hosford uh, we deal with a lot of homeless people there Panacea we deal with a lot of homeless people there's there is like a homeless community 
there that the homeless people live in and they found us and so they come in and some of them you know they, they, some of them kind of come every couple of weeks getting new clothes because they ain't got no way to wash the ones they got so they just wear them out and throw them away and we give them some new ones to put on wow and uh then we get, <laughs> then we got we try in both all centers especially panacea and hosford to make sure we have homeless food items like potty meat, crackers, vines, stuff that they because they can't cook. Right. And uh, Hosford, we got several that come from there. There's an area over there that the homeless live there. And uh, so they'll come down every Tuesday and we know them pretty much now uh, which ones are and they'll come in and we'll just, okay, what you need and we'll go through the box and whatever they get out of the food box that they can eat without having to cook. Then we'll supply them. Now, do you get a chance to talk to them? Oh, yeah, we we'll talk to them. Why, 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 why are they homeless? What's, what's going on in their lives? Well, different things. You know, some of them, they, they lost their job and they can't find another job for their field. Uh, some of them are medically, you know, had, had medical issues and now they're struggling to get their right. feet back under them. Uh, a lot of them are now elderly. I say, told the lady she was in her 70s and she says, I just don't have enough money to buy food. Wow. I just don't have enough. She said, I don't get enough food stamps to get me. She says, and, and, and so it's either pay rent uh, or, or medicine or food. Right. And right. she says, and so I just can't file afford the food. I got to have my medicine. And the thing about it is that the rent is the big ticket a- yeah. a- item right. in somebody's life. Right. I mean, if you're, yeah. I mean, if, if you're looking to uh, maintain a, a, a dwelling that right. you're going to live in. Well, if you own it, you got to maintain it. Sure, sure. But I mean, even, I mean, if, if you've got to rent something, you, you're not going to find anything less than $600 a no, month. No. And then on top of that, it's you've got horrible. utilities and things that goes with it. Right. And if you're not working, you're you're not going to come up with that well, kind of money. Pay, like some of them are elderly, they can't. I mean, they they don't. They're not able to work anymore, uh, and so they still have to pay rent. They still have to pay right. lights. They still have to pay insurance. They still have to pay all the stuff that they normally pay. And then when they come in the month, you got medicine, and uh, you know some of their medicines is just like really unreal that they have to have just to survive. Now, are, they, are they are they living in tents? Are they just some of the homeless people are now? Some of the older people they they got homes. They, you know they just don't can't right. buy food. Right. And wow. Of course, I'm I'm not saying anything against anybody, but the price of food. I went to the grocery store that I'm here. Good Lord, have mercy! The price of food is gone. Uh, yes, it has. <laughs> you know what? Well, you take a person that's on a fixed income, yeah. and now you used to go buy a pack of hamburger meat for a three dollars. Now it's costing you ten. Yeah. Yeah, and that's almost impossible. It's in, yeah, yeah, because you're talking so, about trying to trying to eat three meals a day, right? And, uh, that's yeah, that's that's almost impossible for somebody who does not have an income. And some of these people will have uh, different things that they'll have, maybe Social Security or something like that. But it's it, but you can't live can't on that. Live on so, and they're too old to work part time jobs or, or medically, whatever the deal is, they can't do it. So. God's been good to me to supply me with suppliers for food uh, and, and and clothes and and hygiene items and well like well like the last giveaway I had I just came back from the Appalachian Mountains so uh, actually got back last Thursday and, and I'm sorry Friday and uh, these people they we we was giving a giveaway we ran a slam out of food I mean at the end of the day thank God we had everybody took care of that needed food but we didn't have one box of macaroni and cheese we had nothing right. so you had gathered up food from this area here mm-hmm. in near Woodville Tallahassee yeah and took it and you and you took it all the way to Kentucky yep took it all the way to Kentucky we got three missions we got one called Chop Bottom Kentucky and we do the same thing there I go up and unload a trailer and we set up a trailer and set it out. And uh, for the people to come get. And how often do you go up there? We go every third week of the month. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, that's new, isn't it? Yeah, I started doing that there about three months ago. Yeah, because cause I, I, my impression was that around Christmas time every year, you were yeah, going do, up I, there. I, what I just went and did this trip and come back was carry the children Christmas that don't have Christmas and, and uh, deliver the orphanages and everybody's gifts to them. That's and all of this is just coming to you through through the websites. And, People and donate, and or they'll know me, or somebody will say, "Hey, you know, uh, he does this." And I had I got tickles. I, some people come to me and say, "I want to donate to you because you don't charge anything; you give it all back." Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> which brings but us then, to the question: Where do you get your funding from? How do, well, how do you survive? I got I got some churches that support me. I got some individuals that write me a check every month that help. Because believe me, we just went to from here to. 
Chop Bottom, Kentucky, to Mount Eden, Kentucky, to Warner, West Virginia, to Pennsylvania, then back to Maryland, then back to Florida. And I burnt, uh, you had to rent a U-Haul. I burnt $800 worth of gas. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, what and were the U-Haul you, wasn't cheap. And, and tell them, what are you pulling this trailer with? The my old white van. <laughs> and how, what year is that van? 1993. 1993. 396,000. <laughs> <laughs> you see, here's the thing. <laughs> and I, and I, I told Brother Henry this before he we went on there. I said, people like him and me, we're, we're dreamers. Mm-hmm. See, and dreamers, we, our lives don't make sense. <laughs> Not a bit. <laughs> said, no, no. No, he says, well, he said, well, what are you going to do? He said, well, I'm going to do this. So I said, do you have your money? No, I don't have your money. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> and it happens, doesn't yeah, it? My associate pastor, he... Uh, come, come up a little bit closer. Yeah. Yeah. My associate pastor, Pastor Carter, he tickles me because I'll come up with these harebrained ideas that the Lord do <laughs> And so we he, we had something a while back. I said, Lord, sure, I feel a little... He said, I'm going to tell you about Brother Henry. If the Lord says do it, he just takes off and God That's has right. to fill in all That's the right. holes. Yeah, it's what I say on this show all the time. I say, how do you launch your dream? You see, you put one foot in front of the yeah. other and you just go. <laughs> yeah. but, but you know who... Uh, a really good illustration of this is Roy and Walt Disney. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because Walt was was just a crazy dreamer. Right. He's going to build an empire about a mouse. Yeah. <laughs> and, and his brother Roy says, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and so he just leave Roy to raise the money. Right. And he just go do it. Right. Because he was a dreamer. Yeah. But but just think about it. What would this world be without both? Right. I mean, right. I mean you got to have the practical people. Somebody's got to have their feet on yeah. the ground. <laughs> right. But it ain't you and I. No. <laughs> No, we're not the ones. No, no, no. We just we just go do it. Yeah, just go and, do and, it. And the Lord, you figured out how to fix it. <laughs> and, and all the time, you got these other people going. You can't do that. You can't oh, do that. You can't that. do that. Yeah, and I hear that. Just keep lot. on. Just keep on doing it. Going to Kentucky again in that yeah. van? Yeah, I'm busting off in that van. It's filled up with gas. Let's go. Ninety three. Nineteen ninety three. Three hundred. I think there's three hundred ninety six or ninety seven thousand miles now. But now that's not the original motor, is it? No. I mean, motor. <laughs> But I tell uh, no, the motor I put in about a hundred thousand miles ago, and everything's in it's been rebuilt. I keep it up rebuilt because you know, what you may not know is that he is a mechanic. Yep, and uh, he can fix them. Yep, and uh, if they break down on the side of the road, you just fix them. Yep. Right, just get tools. I carry tools with me. Yeah, <laughs> and extra parts. <laughs> Because <laughs> you might just you dissipate might just need it. <laughs> in 1993. Yeah. It might just break down yeah. somewhere along the line. But I, I, I told the kids some other day, I said, the, the, the shine is not wax, it's anointing oil. I prayed for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the thing about it is that uh, uh, God just keeps opening these areas of, of ministry for you. But the, but the thing that I'm being encouraged by, by what you're telling us, that there are people joining with you. Yeah. Oh, yes. See, Thank that's God. A, that's the thing. About, do it. Yeah, vision, a person who has vision, who can relate the vision, right. and other people will join them. Yeah. That's, well, it's, it's that's it's the so important thing. Because, you know, I, I don't want no credit for myself for this, because this is a God thing, and he brings the people. But I was in Chop Bottom here, not this trip, but in November, and we was doing a giveaway, and we had probably 50, 60 people coming to get food and clothes. And this one lady came up, and she was just, thank you, thank you, thank you, just trying to pat me on the back. And I looked, I said, ma'am, let me let me explain something to you. Don't thank me. Give God the praise. Because I want to explain to you, I just drive the van. Uh-huh. It takes a <laughs> lot of people. Sure it does. To do this. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it's separated by people. It's clothed by, it's washed by people. It's folded by people. Sure. The food's brought to me by people. All I do is put it in a van. I don't, sometimes I do that, and I crank it up and I step behind the wheel. And I can't even take credit for that. Because if you go up the mountains, you better have the Lord with you. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, Brother Henry, if it were not for a visionary person, right. these other people would not be involved with you because no. they, they, because not everybody flows that way. Right. See, you 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 are a man who's learned the value of the anointing of the Holy Spirit and and, and flowing with the Holy Spirit. Right. And, and the Holy Spirit leads, and, and you you've developed that in your life to where you hear God and you respond. Right. But not everybody does. But you lead the way. Right. <laughs> it's like a one year. I hear that at the live nativity, this lady came up. It was just starting to rain, and we're standing there in the rain. And she's she's asked me. She says, "Uh, I want to know who who who's behind all this." I said, "Well, this is this has been my heart and passion all these years." And she said, "You see, you are the ladder 
and I loved her illustration. She said, right. You are the latter because yeah. you are the one that leads the way so the rest of us can follow. Right. Well, well, God has people like that. He's the, he, we have this in Scripture. Right, absolutely. People who uh, they, they, they learn how to hear the voice of God and they respond accordingly. Right. And then God brings other people along with it. Right. I have, I have another teaching that I do sometimes back when I was doing a lot of training. I call it the fish of the future. Mm-hmm. Now, here's my theory on fish of the future. It's a, a lot of the things that God's going to call you to do, you're going to step out to do, the people who are going to help you are not even saved yet. Right. I, I do. I have yeah, some. Sure. Sure. I do. Yeah. As, as you go and, and you're just doing what God's called you to do, mm-hmm. and then people are, are responding to the gospel right. message to come to Christ, next thing you know, they're your right hand. Yeah. I got some <laughs> out now that I'm telling you what. They are rock solid yeah. with me, and they help me. And if it wasn't for them, I couldn't. And, and the thing about it, and they, they become very loyal mm-hmm. because you are the one that God used to bring them right. to the gospel message and come to Christ. Right. And so, and again, you see this same example in the scripture. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the, I mean, you think about a lot of those people that the apostle Paul talks about. Mm-hmm. That he says, uh, you know, my, my brother Titus and then uh, uh, young Timothy. Of course, Timothy grew up in a, in a, in a home that they were believers, but right. But you, you have these people that he talks about that were one to the gospel, and now they're they're out there doing it too. Right. See, that's that's right. what it's all about. That's the continuation of it. But thank God for the dreamers. Right. Yep. Well, <laughs> we so we don't have sense enough to know that you could fail. Yep. <laughs> you can't fail. I don't think you know. No. <laughs> Give it the best you got. And <laughs> that's it. That's it. Now you talked about the one down in. Panacea, and I remember the last time you were on the show with me. That was the the plan. There was a plan of church in the beginning. That was what we started with yeah. the church. But but now it's it's a now it's a mission and a mission. But then you call them a, a feeding station. Or, yeah. Or, well, w- it was when I was praying because we seemed that the church would get going, then just struggle, and then get going. And I kept and so one day I was praying. I said, Lord, what what is the what is the mission of this? Right. What is our goal here? You know, because you provided the building, you provide everything we need. So, what is your goal here? I'm missing it somehow because the church is blessed, but it just not. And then I forget the Lord spoke to me. He says, "I want you to start a clothing and food mission here." And I stepped out by faith again, not knowing what I was doing. And then we opened up, and next thing I knew, God brought me a lady from Bristol. Her name is Kay. She comes and runs it for me. If I'm on the road, she runs it. Takes care of everything. It runs fine uh, with no problems. Uh, and it's become the mission. Right. But uh, was this the first one? That was the first one. Yeah. yeah. And so this kind of became the prototype. Yep. Unless you said, not really know exactly what it is you were doing. Right. Panacea was the first one. Then, uh, I, uh, God, would, the Lord wouldn't leave me alone about Hosford. They just, and I, I was raised in Bristol. And so finally, one day I said, okay, Lord. You know, so you want a mission in Hosford? <laughs> and uh, so I was at, I was preaching for a church over in Bristol, and uh, this lady was there, and I know her, you know, from, you know, I asked her, I said, what would you think about a mission in Hosford? And she just stood there and she said, you know what? It's been always my dream and desire to do a work for the Lord in Hosford and do a mission. Well, is there a reason? I mean, does, does she know a particular need in that area? Yeah, yeah. She knows the people. The people, because when she's there, they have a high respect for her. Her daughter helps me. They all know them. So they become kind of like, you know, my connection. Right. Okay. Because everybody knows them. And then when we started yeah. the, with the word spread, you know, then the Calhoun County Record put it in there for me that we was doing this, and they said they was going to do it every week for free. So every week in the county, Calhoun County Journal, there's an ad in there, come to us for free food and free clothes. Wow. And that covers Calhoun, right. Liberty, Alpha, all over the area. Yeah, but going back to this place in Panacea, this is always important to me. It's a lot of times when, you, when you're trying to figure it out, mm-hmm. you know, what's God doing here? How's he leading? And then you, then you go into one place and you make some mistakes and that doesn't work, but, but, you, but you hone it down. You, yeah. you learn. You keep working it. And then, then the next place you go, you, you've got a pattern here that yeah. you can develop because you know what? Well, this, this worked here. It'll probably work here. Right. And sometimes it doesn't work exactly right. It we may make that. some changes. Right. 
But it gives you each one. Yeah, because you, then you have the concept of, of what you're doing. Right. And also, it helps to, to define the mission. Right. Because sometimes if the mission gets too scattered, yeah. it's, it's not going to be near as effective. Yeah. So basically, what God has showed you, you go, you give food. You give comfort because I'm, I know that you're presenting the gospel. Yeah, absolutely, I mean, the, the, the very act that you're comes. doing is presenting the gospel, right. and then uh, you give the food, and it works. Yeah, it works. We started uh, with a friend of mine in Alabama who owns a he's a, prints a magazine. We just we done this just as a trial at the first of the year. Ordered a thousand tracks. Okay. Did with it's got a picture on it. It's got a, a about the door at the door knocking. Uh-huh. So I said I want them in every bag that goes through here. There you go. Uh, yeah. And then so if they don't you know, or hand them, make sure everybody gets one of these. We can't count. We're on our third thousand now wow. since March because yeah. people come along saying I have to come to hand out too. Uh, there's a guy that picked up some at Woodville Mission. That he said when he sees uh, people on the homeless street, he put money with the track and say, "Read the track before you spend the money." <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, so the, mesh, the the bottom line is to win people or at least sure. get the gospel to yeah. them. Well, the thing about it is, it's, it's because exactly the scripture you refer to in Matthew 25, where it talks about because you did feed the homeless. Right. Now they're here. They're, your they're listening. You know, a man that's hungry ain't gonna listen to you. Yeah, till you feed him. A man that's a person that's going through. We got this one lady come here a few weeks ago. She's going through a bad time in her life, and she just. In fact, we had one in Panacea not too long ago to come in there. And she's like, "I need some food for my family." And I said, "Sure," and I was there, and so we. And she just broke down right in front of the whole bunch and went to school and she said i'd have never dreamed i would be in a food line yeah. begging for food she said but i just lost my job a couple of weeks ago she said i don't have nothing in the house to eat sure she said we ain't got nothing i got three youngers i don't know what we're going to do and i'd have never dreamed i'd be standing here in a food line begging for food and i said let's clear something up you ain't begging for nothing god gave us this we're giving it to you yeah. and we just remember and she said well, it's can we pray with you? She said, please, I need help. Yeah. I'm struggling. Amen. So we gathered around her. We had five or six people gather around her, take her by the hand. And she squalled the whole time. But it's to let her know that Jesus loves her yeah. and that he cares about her. And she ain't got to beg for nothing. This is, hey, I had somebody that asked me, uh, you going to give that away? So I got absolutely nothing in it. Zero. Give it. Let them have all they want. Wow. When God wow. runs out, we'll get some more. There's a lady I had on the show. It's been a while. And I knew her, and she was uh, working in a church here and doing a uh, where they give them clothes out and different things like that. And she talked about how that she had showed up there one time mm-hmm. be, needing food, but she ran a little fast food restaurant, right? And, but but her family was hungry, yeah. And she and she had to go to this place, and she said they they treated her with so much respect, and now she's running it, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because uh, the people who were doing it, they were doing it out of love, right? Just just because they just love the people, right? Yeah. Let me just remind this uh, wonderful radio audience: uh, this is the gospel on the radio, <laughs> Amen. Talk show. Brother Henry Miller is my guest today. I'm Pastor Jack King, and I'm the pastor of Freedom Road Christian Ministry, and. Brother Miller is also a songwriter, and he is a musician, and he has a song that it's my favorite oh. of all of his songs. <laughs> it's called Shepherd of the Night. Amen. I, 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 I like that part right there. Yeah. Every comes in. Yeah. Listen to this now. You'll enjoy this. God, that was standing in the sink. <laughs> Just praise God. He will see you through the long, long, long. Shepherd of the Night. Shepherd of the Night. Pastor Henry Miller wrote it. <laughs> wrote that song. Sang it. Just coming in one night and going through a hard, hard, hard time in my life. One of the hardest times I ever went through. And I came in and I'd been, it's been one of them nights I'd been up all night. Nights. Couldn't understand why I was going through this trial, why I was going through this test, you know, and thinking, you know, I'd done nothing wrong, you know, and, and then, uh, I walked in my kitchen sink and God just, the word just come to my mind. It's right there. Right there. So I, and I ran, wrote them down as they was coming in. Wow. <laughs> now what about the, 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 the music itself? How did that happen? Well, I got the music and, you know, when I got, when I started writing it, like the notes and the music was coming too. And so I just wrote the That's words amazing. down. And it was all in my mind. And then I called my studio at that time it was in Fort Walton Beach. 
And uh, so he listened to it and he said, well, yeah, he said, that's a great song. And uh, so then we went to this studio recording in Dallas, North Carolina. And so that all the musicians got together and that's what they come up with. Wow. <laughs> well, I, like I said, I, I enjoy the song. And then I, of course, Brother Henry allowed me to put it on a CD project that I put together. Uh, where I had 12 songs on mm. that CD. And uh, that's one of them. <laughs> I, I, miss, I still have a copy of that CD. You know, and the thing about it is that um, Susan Howard, who, who did all the, the graphics and all that kind of stuff, She's not doing it anymore. Really? That's why I haven't been able to get any more. I haven't been mentioning it on the show because right. I don't have any more to give to, right. to, to Yeah, that was to a good CD. You did good. Yeah, it was good. Some, some great songs. Right, on there. Yeah. yeah, it was good songs. But uh, anyway, let me just tell the folks, uh, I'm the pastor of Freedom Road. It's a church over on uh, Capitol Circle. We're in the storefront there. We start our service at 11.05 on Sunday mornings. Love to have you come and worship with us. Um, this is the Sunday after Christmas. Yep. And... Uh, what a great time to go to church. Amen. And uh, yes. anyway, I'd love to have you. Also, if you want to listen to this show again or you want to share it with somebody, go to the podcast. You type in Pastor Jack King, Tallahassee, and there'll be all kinds of podcasts there for you. The different talk shows and all, also the daily broadcast that I do. It's show number 1052. That's what you want to look for. And like I said, you can share it with a friend if you want to. And, and uh, love to have you listen to any of some great shows. Right. Uh, people that I've interviewed over the years, uh, recently. Recently, you interviewed Brother Bill Gaither, Brother Henry, mm-hmm. and that was a real highlight of my life. I so, and, uh, I imagine. And uh, just, and it's supposed to have been a 15 minute interview, it ended up being 45. Uh, and I actually cut it off. He would have kept on talking. <laughs> but I'm thinking, man, this guy's got a lot to do. Right. And uh, anyway, it's all on there. You, you can find it as such. And so I invite you to do that. FRCM.us, that's the website for the church. Check that out. Also, don't forget, Saturday night, 7 o'clock here on 94.1 is a Saturday night gospel sing, a full hour of great southern gospel music. And Brother Henry, we know this, the best music on the planet. Amen. <laughs> now you're talking. <laughs> All right, Brother Henry, you uh, so many things that God's got you to, you're doing besides pastoring and traveling all over the country, delivering, doing this ministry that, that you're doing. And you like recently got back from Kentucky and I did not know that you, you, you say you're doing this every month. We do it every month. Every yeah. month. Every month. Try the third week. Unless now we're, we got January. We may not make it cause the weather can turn real quick on you up in the mountains. Yeah, oh yeah. Where we go. So <laughs> we have to play January, oh, yeah. February by ear. Yeah. And, uh, it's just interesting. You said you also were going to Pennsylvania. Yep. So, so when did that develop? Well, I've been going to Pennsylvania for several years. In fact, I got uh, several churches up there now that support me with a lot of my mission work. When I go up, I usually take that either white van or I rent a U-Haul and go up and pick all their stuff up and bring it back. And uh, the Fields of Harvest Church, I've been preaching for them many years. And and uh, so they are really good at gathering stuff up for me. And I'll come through when I'm through Pennsylvania, preach revivals and preach services and grab everything and come on back south. Wow. And the same thing in Maryland. <laughs> uh, I go through Maryland, just preach yeah. revival at Athel Baptist Church, and they gather stuff up for me. And so I just kind of make a round, like I reckon I call it a circuit riding preacher. And sure. You load my van up, and I come back, and we take it to the center, and everybody starts separating it out to send it to where it needs to go. Wow. And then, uh, then, then it gets reloaded to go to where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> yes. it, it really is a, a tremendous thing that you're doing because you're touching a lot of lives, stuff like this. But now, in your ministry, you've always been an evangelist as well uh, as a I love pastor. Evangelizing. Yeah. Yep. So you're going to different churches. And are you kind of over a network of churches? Yeah, I'm a bishop of Victor Fellowship Assemblies International, which has got churches and a lot of ministers under me that uh, I'm kind of – I reckon you might go, but I, I, they, they call me the, the t- titles, the bishop, but I never like titles. You know, I'm yeah. one of these just call me brother Henry or pastor Henry. But anyway, yes, Victor Fellowship is in international. We license and ordain ministers. We got churches and ministers that, that I kind of oversee you. Now, this say. is something that, if I understand it, kind of fell into your lap. It fell in my lap. Yeah, yeah, it was you kind didn't of like, really set out to do this. No, but, this was what, not yeah. in my agenda. <laughs> yeah, but see, that goes back to what we were talking about earlier, about people will follow vision. Yeah. And uh, they, they see your vision. They see what you're doing. You're ministering to people, and uh, they, they want to be a part of that. Yeah. But now, what about, you say you, you license ministers. Right, license all day. How do you find the ministers? They how, find us, really. They find you. Yeah, we got a website called Victor Fellowship Center. Assemblies International and um, a lot of people they we have what I love about the fellowship is we yeah, I mean I remember it was an organization many years ago and it was real old time worship 
but it drifted somewhere along the way and it got away from the real worship and it got to I don't know what the word to be looking for and when I began to pray about actually God began to speak to me I want you to start this fellowship and so I, I said no I'm not doing that well people started coming to me and there were so many ministers out there that that they great ministers great preachers great women and men of God but nobody wanted to ha- wanted them because they had to do this to get the license, they had to do that to get an ordination papers, they had to do that. And so we began to pray. So anyway, through a long, rigorous process of getting licensed with the government and getting everything set up to where we could become a fellowship. Okay. Uh, we're not a denomination. We're a fellowship. We got people in our fellowship that's Baptist. We got a Pentecostal. We got all different brands because it's all about Jesus Christ. And uh, so when the, we started the fellowship, we said the bottom line is, Let's worship the Lord and present the plan of salvation. Okay. And so that's what we focused on. I've had people say, well, what the nom- we, we don't like, quote, a denomination. We're a fellowship. It's about Jesus Christ. And we've attracted many that are great men and women of God mm-hmm. that, that have, we've ordained and licensed. we got churches that are, they were just little churches sitting over here with no covering, you might say. Right. And that's what I was wondering. Can they be a part of another fellowship? Yeah, we are. We let them be. If you want to be a part of our fellowship, you can still be a part of another organization. We okay. don't put a restriction on you that you can't. Okay. Uh, but we just, like I had one while back, is he's a member of one of, of another organization. Just remember, we are a fellowship, and we don't. That can't bleed into us in our agenda. You know what okay. I'm saying? Sure. Uh, we, because we are a fellowship, we are all about Christ, and everybody should be. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but it's like getting people that, okay, they can't get a license, so they can't get ordained, but yet they're good preachers. Mm-hmm. Our church is really a good church, but nobody wants to cover them because they're not meeting this criteria. And uh, so we, you know, you have to become a bylaw. It's, it's a lot of work to do it, yeah. but we did it. And then the next thing you know, here I am with this. <laughs> well, but the, the, again, you're 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 leading the way. But I'm, I'm assuming there's got to be other people who are working with you. Oh, yeah, you got all board. these. Yeah, we yeah you got all these other things going too. Yeah, no, they, they, I got yeah. a board. I got an assistant. Assistant Bishop Bill Timmons. He lives out in Florida. He's the assistant. Uh, uh, we got. Uh, uh, Myrna Connolly was uh, our missions director and a board member from Bristol, Florida. We got different people all over mm-hmm. that uh, that basically I just, you know, chair the meetings and, <laughs> and and pray for the ordination. Well, but the thing about it is you're the vision. Right. You're, you're the visionary. And and a lot of times that's the way it works. Is you have somebody who they have the vision and they, they articulate their vision and right. there's other people that picks it up and, and does a lot of the legwork. Yeah, I, remember, I remember the first camp meet we had, we had it in Woodville at my home church. Uh, we had maybe three quarters of the church full. My church seats maybe a hundred, maybe if you can get a, you know, okay. Then a couple of next years outgrew the church, so then we had to rent the civic center in Bristol, and uh, we got it filled huh. uh, because it just kept growing. And it's just people that that you know just love the Lord and and, and are called and have great anointings on their lives, and has given them open doors. When somebody said, "Well, who you know you try to preach somebody, well, who do you who are you fellowshipping with?" Well, I'm independent. I have nobody. The mm-hmm. red flags go up right there. Sure, you know. Yeah. So now they can say, "Well, we're Victor Fellowship Assembly," and it, we become pretty well yeah. known in a lot of the yeah, areas. That, that being independent is is a lonely way to go. It is, you yeah. know, because <laughs> you, you don't have no covering. You don't yeah. have nobody to say, "I'm connect." I'm not accountable. Right, right. right. Because I, I did that for a while. That's you, you miss you miss the fellowship. You miss the fellowship, it's and a, you miss the accountability. Yeah. And so, so th- this thing how it's fairly new. I mean, ten years maybe. You've been. I see. We're in our Six or seventh. Year. Okay, and I, I, I remember when you first started yeah, talking about I, it. It's yeah. like that. I think seven. But years it sounded like it's growing. And, it's and, growing. And, and it people really have been is. a part of it. And you uh, know, and these people are, I guess, word of mouth. They're finding out you there, but also your websites and stuff. Like that. Well, they word of mouth, and because that's really how we got the fellowship going. Because I mean, I was I was really nervous about this whole thing. I just think you know, this thing is over my head. You know, I can't <laughs> I can't be a you know a store of some kind of fellowship or an organization. But as it began to bring the people to me, God brought the people to the board. Sure. And God brought the people for the the next the churches wanted to come. And then the, when the people seen us growing, then the word got out. Yeah. You know, because the yeah. church, like one church in Bristol, uh, the, the word got out. And so they all wanted to be a part of it. So then they went and told their friends. And so, you know, but to, to be licensed or and you got to go through a, a regular 
you got a, a uh, application, right? Then it's got to go before our board to be yeah, approved. Sure, sure. Before we go, because you got an accountability there yes, to, sir, to, to the people. Yeah, to we, the people. when you say, okay, we've licensed this person, that means we're approving this yep, person. Got and, 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 and you can be held accountable. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a very serious. Yeah, uh, we do. We had. To, I hate to say it. We had to start doing background checks. We had to do everything. Well, absolutely. Organization. Sure. Because you got to know who you're putting your papers in. Yeah, yeah. Because they're going to be out there in these churches and right. stuff like that, and you have an accountability to the congregation. Right. To, to, they get, they didn't know who they were bringing into their church there right. because there's a lot of a lot of things. Oh, that, brother! Yeah. Yes, you <laughs> yeah. preach there. Well, <laughs> well, well, like I said, I, I, I sat on the Southeast Region uh, Board of the Open Bible Churches for this is for 1987 to. 2019. Mm-hmm. So, I've been down that road, yeah. and I know what that's all about. Yeah, and uh, and sometimes it can be really good, and then sometimes it can really be a problem. It can. And yeah. the thing about it is, that when you when the problems occur. Now you're glad that you've got the accountability set Absolutely. in place. Absolutely, I had a church in South Florida that's been with us for probably most of the way, and they just went through a place, and they needed me to come down and get everything. And that was good for that pastor that he could say, "Okay, he's coming down, yeah, to help us get this straightened out." Right. Oh yeah. And then, yeah. of course, I went down, and of course, thank God, we got it all worked out. And but the thing is, it gave him that peace. Okay, I ain't got to handle this by myself. I don't right. know what to do here. Right. And it's just thinking uh, the church that's totally independent does yeah, not have does anything. Not have that. Yeah. It, it, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you and I could spend the rest yeah. of the show oh. just telling stories. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know, brother. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This, but, uh, as you say, uh, stories that could curl your hair. Yes. <laughs> but when we like, like when this all began, it was mostly for giving that preacher that's that kind of or that church is kind of throw to itself. Where well, we ain't gonna mess with them because they have no covering, nobody. There's no accountability to them. They just. Like you said, weird things can happen. Yeah. And so it did that. And uh, so now, like I say, if they call me and say, brother, we got a situation in the church. Can you come help? Then I yeah. drive over to where they're at, and we resolve the problem. Now, what about training? Uh, had, did you have any methods in your, for your people to get training? Well, we hadn't got to that that place yet. We, we Of course, in the, in the bylaws, there's uh, – you know, we don't. You don't make you have to have a college, but you, if you don't have any training, then you have to come with the pastor's recommendation okay. that you are called to preach. Then one of our board members has to hear you preach okay. to see that you're called. And we just usually try to make them stay with the Bible. We may one day look at some other stuff, but right now we're seven years into it. It's growing, and uh, we're trying to keep it simple to where the man that don't have the money. To do a whole sure, lot of studying. Because sure. yeah. I was with one organization, you had to pay ever so often to go take a credit to get a credit to keep your papers. Yeah. And I didn't like that because that man, you know, some people can't afford that. Yeah. You know, a man that's working free feeding his family can't run to these meetings and pay two or three hundred dollars a meeting to just get a paper so he can say I passed. Right. So it, yeah. we help that. Yeah, it has a, on both sides. You you want a man to to get training. Yes, absolutely. Because, uh, because even though you say, well, you, you stick to the Bible, there, there are other things that they need to know. Well, that's so, true. Sometimes yeah. it's just practical right. training about how to deal with people in a church. This has been one of them <laughs> things that my associate pastor said, when I started it, God's had to fill the plugs in and hope <laughs> yeah. get it together. Well, it's, it's, it's tough. It really is. It is. And, and uh, one of the things that, that we have, again, in the Upper Bible Church, so that where I'm a part of, finding new ministers and it's been tough that. because we've closed all of our Bible colleges now. Right. And, and, it's, and it's interesting to me is that when I first became a part of the Open Bible Organization, there were th- things called institutes. Mm-hmm. And these were simple training facilities. They right. weren't colleges. They weren't accredited by the, the regional accreditation or anything like that. They were just schools. They were teaching young men and women how to become a pastor, mm-hmm. how to preach, that right. type of thing. But we got away from all that. Yeah. And we went the other route with the uh, more formal institutions, even tried to get the regional accreditation. It cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Right. And we ended up training people who weren't going into the ministry. There you go. And yeah. now – We've gone full circle, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, I just find that well, you learn from your, you, well, you your learn, experience, right. just stuff like it. But uh, but young people are not going into the ministry as, as much as they were, right? There's, it's, we're in a different era, different era, as such. Well, I mean, when I was with the organization that I got my first papers with in 1977, 
Yeah, I had to take one year of Emanuel Bible College before they would even give me, a, a, you know, papers to prove. Right, right. Which I did. I took yeah. it. It was thank God it was a home course, and uh, and, and but see, those were uh, excellent. Yeah. Because a lot of colleges were doing that right. and make it available to a man or a woman who's who's working. Right. You've got a family. Yeah, I had it and, that and, way. I mean, never went to cut them, stop, went to a college. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult when you've got two or three kids to, yeah. to stop working and, and go to, the, to a campus right. and be there. And so, yeah, uh, if, if they have correspondence, of course, back when they first started doing that, there would be some tapes and stuff yeah. that they sent oh, you yeah. or, or later v- videos. Right. And, and you take those things and you put them in the machine and you sit there and you right. Learn and, t- and, and then you take some tests. And, right. and, and what I had to take, but, but it, it was good though. It was that, good. It college, I used stuff today. Yeah, that colleges I, I we were able to provide this. A lot of times it'd be the same professor. That if you went to the school, you'd be under uh, his thing. tutelage, and then you're getting it on video, and, and yeah, you just didn't get to fellowship right. with, with, one, with another. But but it was an excellent way, right, in order to be able to, to uh, train. Now. Uh, we have a, a program called Instay mm-hmm. in the Upper Bible Church. It's excellent, and mm-hmm. uh, um, you can do it all online now. Right. I mean, you don't even have to have videos or anything, it, you, and you can become a part of a group right. that meets online. Right. And we have we put a lot of uh, pastors in churches through the Instay program. Right. And, and actually, the the lady who created it. Actually, was in Spain. Now, she's American, mm-hmm. but she had gone to Spain to do a different type of program, and it didn't work. And she wrote this program in Spanish, right? And it it just took the Latin countries. I mean, all over. Wow. It, it just became just powerful, right? Well, then here in America, some they got together. And they said, "Well, we need to come up with some type of training program or something here in America." And they discovered that the best thing going was Instay, right? The problem was it was in Spanish. Yeah. So she had to come back to America and spend about two years translating it <laughs> back to English. in English. And she was English speaking. Right. But th- th- they did it. Right. And now it's in several languages and stuff like that. Right. And really being a blessing all over the world. Right. Especially in the Latin cultures. Right. Um, in missions, we'll have uh, maybe 50 or 60 students in some of these countries that are studying in state preparing right. well, to, great, to become yeah. ministers. And so, yeah, uh, because that's a real problem. Yeah. Because you and I both, we both, we, uh, we're not going to tell it. Yeah. But, but we both born in the same year. Yeah. Right. And, and we're not young chickens anymore. No, no, no sir. But, and so, so who's going to step in? Right. That's exactly what I said about the day, you know, one day we got to hand the mantle to somebody else. That's right. That's right. You know, and when we hand that mantle to somebody yeah. else, then you'd be prepared. Yeah. And another thing you mentioned a few minutes ago was that uh, being in a church, mm-hmm. you can learn a lot working yeah. at, looking under a pastor, especially if that pastor will will put you in the Word and will right. give you a series of studies. Right. Where Absolutely. You're, you're studying the scriptures and things like that, along with practical experience right. of being with a senior pastor right. in a church, and even a small church, yeah. can be very beneficial. Right. But again, we're we have to look to the future. Yeah, we have to, and the Lord don't come, and then, then we got to have this has got to keep going. Sure, and, sure. And we need to invest. That's why I try my best invest into people, invest in them, yeah. so that prayerfully some of it will take and go. You know, and and, and I see. The investments I put in, some working. Right. And you see, and you get a lot of times um, people who are maybe they're in their 40s and they feel called. Mm. And um, so now they got to catch up yep. in order to be able to, because now the, a lot of them are at that age. Yeah. They feel the call of God and they're ready to go into the ministry, but they got to have some training. Got to have some training. And that, but that can be a very important part of the future yeah. of the churches but we also have to begin to identify the young ones yeah if we see the call of god in their yeah. lives yeah i got a couple right now that one's a young lady young girl actually and she's i just know that i just feel my heart because she is so hungry and and she don't mind you letting god use her she yeah. don't but yeah and but if she'll let god take that and build that and and grow mentally, physically, and right. spiritually. Right. Then she'll be a tool yeah. in God's hand. But see, I remember when I was uh, a ch- just a child, really. Mm. But going to youth camp, things like that. And some of those pastors that yeah. were from that was a part of the organization I was in at the time. Right. They recognized the call of God in my life. Right. And they and they talked to me about it. Right. And they encouraged me to right. to, to be involved in, in different things. But a lot of times. If we if we don't become intentional yeah. about these things, 
time will pass by. And it go fast. And then we look up and we go, well, who's going to pastor these churches? Right. Who's going to take your thing? Yeah. Yeah. Who's going who's gonna to run th- this organization that yeah. you founded? Who's going to drive that white van? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody going to drive that white van. <laughs> Uh, but you see what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. We, and we got to invest in them, you know. And yeah, that, that, it's it's a it's a critical. Yeah, to me, it's critical more now than ever. Yeah, yeah, because uh, uh, like uh, across America, yeah. like, like, like I told you, the Open Bible, we've closed all of our Bible colleges. Mm-hmm. That's not just our organization. Mm-hmm. That's that's across the land. Yeah. Bible colleges are closing, and. Uh, if, if we don't have those, how are we going to train them? Well, I'm running to this problem that some of the churches are closing because there's nobody to take them over. Sure. Yep. Know, I had a church here not too long ago. I preached the last service in it because the pastor said, well, we, you know, he's retired. He's old and they can't find nobody that's interested in taking it. So they close the doors. And, and part of that is because of the condition of the church itself. Right. I mean, was it smaller? It was a smaller church. It, uh, first time I preached there many, many years ago, it was a pretty packed, packed church. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, over the years, this one died off and that one died off. Right. And this problem and that problem, the church dwindled down. There weren't many people left. Yeah, because what's happening yeah. is you go in a lot of our churches, Every denomination, right. it's all white hair. Yeah, and the young and people, more more. yeah, the young people are staying away. Yeah, we got to figure that out. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, well, you know, nowadays a lot of them going through it and getting it through the media. They're gotten, you know, uh, but that's not the same as no, church. We, no, it's we, not. We no. we don't lose the church. No, it's it's not the same thing. And then, and unfortunately, many of them are not even doing that. No, no. And no. so, yeah. yeah, these are concerns to me, brother Henry. Yeah, well, me too, they, brother. They really do. And I, as a pastor and a missionary and all this, you know, I see it. You know, yeah. it bothers me that because we still need to evangelize the world. Oh yeah, you know, and people are not want to be yeah. missionaries. People, yeah, are, the Great Commission didn't change. Yeah, I think I read <laughs> something not last ninety days. Seven thousand ministers closed their books and quit. Yeah, in the last ninety days, according to one of the polls I read, that's sad. When we got seven thousand. That's disturbing. It's disturbing. They're yeah. closing down and quitting. Wow. And uh, that was a statistic I just read a few days ago, and I thought, wow, seven thousand in ninety days. That's that's yeah. That's that's a uh, cannot continue. No. And, in, in other words, we, we can't continue that way w- yeah. without it going on. And then, then, then people like me and you are still trying to keep up and make up the difference. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Brother, it's time to pray. I can't believe it. This time goes by so fast. I know it. My here. goodness. It's... Hallelujah. Father God, I just pray for Brother Henry. The Lord God, yes, just God. bless him. You, keep him. Keep him well, Father. Give him health. <laughs> yes. Lord God, keep that old van just yeah, running. Keep her running. And Father God, I just pray. As he's going and ministering to these people, yes, the God that the, 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 just a gospel will speak. Yes, Lord, let it shine. Father, we pray for all of our pastors and for the ministry in our pulpits today. Father yes. God, let the truth come forth. Yes, Father, yes, we pray over America. Oh God, we need peace in this yes, world. We do, Jesus. And Father God, we pray for peace in the city of Jerusalem and the nation of Israel. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brother Henry, it's been great to have you on the joy show. Joy to be back, brother. Joy, <laughs> enjoyed it. Even though we didn't get to play the Apple Tree song. I enjoy- oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to talk and have oh, such a good have time. A time with you. We have a good Amen. time. That's all right. Until, until next time. Next Sunday morning. May the Lord bless you. Amen.